Welcome to the Morally End. My name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by uh, making his Morally End debut, um, the d- domestic cricket god Adil Siddiqui. Uh, we've got the uh, professor of cricketology, my cousin in the United States, Dominic Machado, and we've got former Sri Lanka analyst Prad Navaratnam. It's a fairly um, fairly heavyweight panel we've got on this LPL review show today. Um, we've had we've had the final. The Jaffna Kings have have kind of continued their. Um, I want to say their era of winning, but that kind of implies that there was a, an LPL era before that, and there wasn't really. Um, they've kind of won yet again, even though they've had quite a lot of changes to the, to their team and, and to the franchise setup. They beat Gaul in the finals. Uh, we're just going to go around and, and have a chat about kind of what we think went on in this LPL. Who who are the people who um, who stood out for us? Who are the people who might have slightly underperformed? And uh, um, you know what what might happen in the future of this tournament because it kind of feels like it's all up to play for. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit the follow button, leave a comment, um, tell us what your t- thoughts were of the tournament, um, and leave us a like at least if you're watching on YouTube or even on Facebook. You can watch the show, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our newsletter as well. That comes out quite frequently at the moment because there's styles at the Asia Cup, and. Um, She's writing a lot about it, so um, you want you don't want to miss any of that. Um, Adele, we'll come to you first because you you're making your debut today. Uh, what's your kind of overall takeaway from the tournament? Are you happy with the way it's all gone? I can see the drones have found a nice home behind your head. <laughs> yeah, of course the drone drone show was a huge highlight. I mean, it was great, but uh, I think uh, let's just talk about let's just stick to the cricket. And I'm I'm not I'll not talk about the organizing part of it because see that's a whole uh, separate aspect. So we can talk about cricket. We can talk about the organizing, uh, scheduling. You know, uh, team owners, consistency of those, and uh, sponsorships and all those stuff. That's a completely different aspect, which I don't think I'm an expect expert to talk about. But uh, just talking on the cricket as a fan. As, as, Simply as a fan, uh, I really, really enjoyed the cricket this season. Uh, I think out of all the five seasons, this season we we saw the most competitive uh, LPL. I I think because all five teams were good. Uh, uh, after the auction, I thought uh, Candy and uh, Dambulla were like uh, so far behind the other three teams, especially Jaffna, Colombo, and Gaul. But uh, with the ownership change and the adjustments, uh, the changes Dambulla did, they they were a good side. They Finally, fielded a good side as well. So overall, the competition, uh, the tournament was very well competed. Uh, the quality of cricket, uh, the quality of wickets, uh, boundary sizes, uh, boundary length. I think it was only short in uh, Colombo, but but it's still standard when you compare with certain uh, like high-profile grounds over the uh, around the world, like Mumbai, Delhi, or something like that. So it's still fine. Nothing to complain about that. And uh, the way the players approached the. Uh, Especially the local players played. I think uh, they showed a lot of intent. Uh, the scores were good, um, and of course the foreign players. I think we had the uh, best uh, bunch of foreign players this time. Yes, we didn't have these big names like Barbara Azam or uh, David Miller or someone like that. But I think we had these hot shots like Glenn Phillips, dynamite player, uh, Tim Seifert, Alex Hills. Even though he's retired, still he's got it. Uh, and uh, Mustafiz was there, even though he didn't play much towards the end. Uh, so yeah, we've got really good uh, foreign players, like the hot shots, the informed players, uh, Riley Rousseau, two hundreds, great tournament. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm really happy with the uh, cricket which was played in the tournament. Uh, but there's a slight disappointment with regards to team selection strategies because, like, I think Pratt will. Uh, Pratt will talk talk about it uh, uh, better, uh, and he he's the expert here because modern we talk about modern cricket matchups, this and that, all those stuff. So I honestly, as a fan who like watch IPL, uh, all the other other leagues, international cricket, I felt teams are still not that equipped mm-hmm. with that part. It was just you know coming out and expressing yourself the, because the conditions were great, so they just played good cricket. But the strategical aspect. I think uh, they are still not that up to uh, the mark, uh, the standard that they need to be when we compare with other leagues and the other professional cricket teams around the world. But uh, and of course selection. So selection is also part of that. Uh, and as a as a Sri Lankan cricket fan, and as like you said, a person who is so uh, 
uh, passionate about uh, our domestic players, the opportunities that they got. I've got to say this, uh, I'm really, really disappointed with the opportunities they got, even though there was a under mandatory under-23 rule, uh, certain teams, clearly, Candy Falcons, like, uh, they didn't utilize it properly. Yeah. Um, even even uh, Colombo, like, I, I, I won't, like, it's not a bad thing that they did, but they played it really, really smart. They had Matisha Patirana, Dunit Vellalagi, and Shivan Daniel. So they didn't have to bother about the mandatory under 23 rule. Even Jaffna Kings to a certain extent because they had BS Kant. So um, certain things needs to be uh, considered about Power Blast. I think we are still too early to comment about it, but I still stand with my initial stance on that. It should be, uh, the batting team should be allowed to like pick it when they, whenever they want and not have it fixed. So that's something to be debated. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm happy. But there are like certain, I mean, there are some really, really concerning uh, things that we should improve going forward. A, a lot, to, a lot to digest over there. Prad, we'll come to you next because uh, Adele, Adele really wanted to find out what you thought about uh, the kind of strategy, the in-game strategy that was being used. And uh, the, I suppose, really, what we're talking about is the use of stats and data. Do you, did you feel that that was happening much? And do you feel that in the kind of, what, five years off the tournament, it's teams are getting more and more sophisticated with their use of it? Um, good, it's a great question. And look, I, I really don't know. I didn't have anything to do this year. This is LPL, so we didn't need a team. So in terms of inside, I'm not sure. Um, I do know Gaul, Marvels, you know, they, they utilized um, the Kokoda Knight Riders uh, at least just for the auction only, Streak Art. But he, he was there just for the auction. I think uh, their assistant coach, Kapo Gatherer, confirmed that on Twitter that during the season they don't have any analysts actually on site. Um, so, you know, and, and to be honest, I know the national team, Sri Lankan team lead analyst, the guy who, who took, out, took over after I left, he was with Columbus Strikers. Um, the former national team analyst who I took over from uh, was with Jaffna Kings, and he's always been with Jaffna Kings. Um, but in terms of Candy and uh, Dumbler, I'm not sure. I know they had an analyst during the auction, and he was one of the guys I trained as well. So, but uh, or not trained, so he was part of the part of the brain set of team um, that was there. So he was with with Dumbler. Um, but in terms of strategy used during the games, it, look. Um, it's 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 hard to say because as much as you have an analyst on on site, it comes down to the the coaching staff, the captain, all being open to uh, you know taking it on and actually applying it. Um, comes down to how much contributions the analysts themselves are going to make during the team meetings, right? Um, I, I'm very much a vocal guy, so I, I'll always make sure my voice is heard, whichever team I'm with, whether it was the Sri Lankan team or the LPL teams. Um, so it just it just varies. Uh, it's uh, looking at the, the the games that were played. Uh, it, it was in a way I didn't see there was a little bit of matchup work. I thought I felt oh there's a little bit of work done when it came to Jaffna Kings. I felt the way they were handling their bowling changes um, was really good. I was surprised early on, um, you know, the lack of slow left arm orthodox versus mm. Alex Hales wasn't used. Everyone just kept trying to ball pace at him and I was you know I was just sitting there going what's going on here you know they're just giving him what he wants and he's just pummeling it um, and, and so that and that, if not all they were trying to bowl um, I think they tried to bowl off spin and, and, and some others but they weren't bowling the left arm orthodox and we saw Fabian Allen come on and, against him and do really well but strikers could have done the same thing I'd have thrown mm-hmm. to Will Allen and said have a go one or two of us early on see what happens you know um, so, so you could see there was a little bit of use of data there I think um, uh, but in, in terms of much more, I, I really wouldn't know too much. Um, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, get thoughts on guys who were in the LPL and, you know, like mm-hmm. Anton and stuff like that and see what, you know, what, what it is they actually did. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's interesting you bring up the left arm orthodox issue over there because I, I had a few questions from a few people who don't follow Sri Lankan cricket that closely asking me why there were so few left armers. Um, you know, when you, when you think of Sri Lankan cricket, right, you think of unorthodox bowling actions, right, yeah. especially if, if you're not involved, if you're not, in, you know, have no relationship to the island. And there's a few left hand, there's uh, left hand slow bowlers who weren't involved in, in any of the franchises. Um, it's kind of become a reoccurring theme in all the content that Murillian's done the last few weeks about the use of kind of under 23s and the use of um, kind of emerging players. 
um, as well. It feels to me like two things kind of need to happen. And once, once that, they need to kind of really embrace data uh, yeah. more so. It's kind of shocking that, you know, an established or... I want to say established. It was their first. It was their first time round. You know, a, a team like Gaul spend a lot of money, but they don't think it's worth having an analysis with them on the ground. On, on the ground, right? That they'd be one of the few professional uh, cricket teams doing that this year. A few professional sports teams doing that this year. Mm. Um, yeah. And also, I just feel like more than anything, th- this tournament's crying out for a sixth team because it feels to me like there's a lot of domestic talent that weren't getting a shot. Um, you know, we can all sit here and rattle off names of people who deserved to to have more for go. You know, they might have got one or two matches here or there. And also, on top of all that, I just don't think there's enough jeopardy in this tournament early on. You can lose oh, too much to begin with correct. and and still not get through. Yeah. And now that we're kind of trying to push this on and develop it into something else, I mean, the drones are great, but a six team will be better. I think yeah. uh, would be my take on it. Don, what, what have you kind of got? What would your takeaways be from it uh, now that it's all done? Yeah, I think, you know, just to pick up on a couple of points, the slow left armors, I think, is a really interesting point because, uh, you know, Adil will tell you slow left armors dominate the first class scene, right? And they are such a valuable commodity in T20 cricket. And Brad will tell you that. Someone like Akil Hussain, you saw how valuable he was. Um, and it's and especially against right-handers. And you're thinking, uh, we're about to go up against India, right? One of their big weaknesses is against slow left arm bowling. England, same thing. So having flooding players like that and realizing their value, who particularly against dominant batsmen, is something that you see missing, right? Um, I thought one thing that was interesting is Prabhas seemed to be used more and more as a white ball spinner uh, and showed his value. Someone like Nimesh Vimukti also, uh, oh ton of talent i you know he he did a great job tying up i think kuzel mendes one of in one of the early matches so they have some talent someone like uh, manuja sanhan sahan is also someone who uh could fill that role and i think you know to, to prad's point with the use of analytics i think it's even more important in high scoring now right because it's not something where you can say okay let's aim to restrict them to this much per over, right? You have to go for wickets. You have to try to make batters right. uncomfortable, right? Because if you're not making batters uncomfortable, it's going to be easy for them to score. And having a plan where you've said, okay, right, Alex Hales, right? You should be bowling. You should be trying slow bowling, right? Slow left arm bowling against him early in his innings, right? And we, we've we done that before, right? We've, we've used that. I remember, I think, Praveen, uh, Jaya yeah. Wickram, uh, yeah. took some wickets against him too right so t- having those basic kind of fundamentals of like how do we balance an in innings um how do we do it and and i guess one thing that you know sort of stood out to me even in that um the the game that jaffna lost against gall they had dds come in at six ahead of omer's eye and fabian allen and that to me is is kind of stunning right what what is the strategy behind that right even if you have DDS in the team and you think he's a valuable cricketer, when you're in the last five overs, the value that an Omer's eye or a Fabian Allen add is just so much more. So I really take the point um, by both Prad and Adil that having that strategy will be really helpful. And I think it'll help the Sri Lankan players to understand the gameplay, right? And, and we oh. talked about, um, you know, sort of with Prad before about the influence it has on, okay, how do you understand the T20 game to be played? What are the ways that you can win a T20 game? It just gives you more options, right? It seems like you have plan A, which is fine, but to be able to think on your feet and say, okay, well, what's a possible plan B or C that we can get to when a batsman is running rampant? What are the ways that we can we can tighten these things up? Um, but I also agree with Adil that um, it was a great quality of cricket. Lots of runs scored, lots of great spells of bowling, um, it was really good to see pitches prepared to kind of teach Lunkin players to play a more aggressive brand of cricket and adjust to that. And um, I think it's a good step. I also agree with Mark that a six team seems like it would be a good thing to bring in. And I think it would balance the, the talent. Um, there's a lot of parity at the moment. I think every team had between three and five wins in the first eight matches. So uh, good tournament, but still some areas for improvement. I think 
thinking about how how fan interest can be drummed up a bit more might be another way to ensure that um, players investments in additional squads owners stay the same but we can talk more about that later um the the hundreds beginning in in england today uh, as i'm talk as we're recording this right and obviously the hundreds absolutely divided english cricket between kind of uh, diehard Kansas cricket fans who think the hundreds strangling it to Kansas cricket to death and i suppose kind of slightly more casual cricket fans who kind of can see the benefits and having it i think a lot of the problem with the hundred is quite similar to the problem with the lpl in a way though we kind of come to it from different ways which is people don't really know what it's there for so i think all four of us come come to the lpl with the idea that it's there to create the next generation of international players right that it's the the bridge between drunk and domestic players to to going on to to achieve great things on the national side right well i'm not entirely sure if you are invested in a team you know, if you're a team owner or if you, if you a coach or if you're one of the people involved in it, that is what you care about. I think they probably just care about winning the tournament, right? And and because of that, it, it's the reason why we're not seeing enough or, or the what we consider the right under-23 players getting exposed mm-hmm. or being played at the right times and we get kind of frustrated by it. And, you know, Pran, you've been involved in, in the machine. Do we need, as fans, do we need to reassess what we're expecting at this tournament? No, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. You nailed it right on the head. I, I know I was, see, I was with SLC around the time um, they, they, they planned and launched the National Super League. That's when, you know, the, remember the Creed Committee led by the De Silva was on. I, I was there. I was part of it. When Tom Moody came in, Mahalo was running it. Um, and the whole plan was the Super League or the National Super League. The NSL was there for your tests and your one days. And they were going to use the LPL for the exact same bridge for T20s. So you nailed it on the head. That's what SLC is using it for in terms of selection. They want that to be the bridge to international cricket. Um, and at the same time, you want owners to come on board and, and, and create it. Look, where I think, this is just my personal view, where I think the gap is, is that um, this, the way, whether it's IPG or SLC, I'm not sure, but the way they've structured it for owners, there's just no return. So all they want to see is them to win, right? So they effectively, they're not... If I was IPG or SLC, I'd be offering the owners, hey, take a five-year ownership, mm. not a one year by year. Just take a five-year ownership, pay it off year by year, whatever you need, right? Uh, and invest in this team. And don't like, let's not chop and change um, squads, right? You got to build mm. brand value. You got to build a following. That's how you. That's how the owners are going to get their return back. So to build a squad, you got to do it like the IPL. Have a mega auction every three or four years, even if you need to. And get the ownership run over that period as well. But because even over that period, if I was owning a team and I've got to the fourth year, yes, I'm going to have to change my team around. Mm. But I'd be just at the precipice there of getting a return on my investment. So I'm probably going to go for another Mm. cycle of another four years. And then suddenly you've got the same owner across eight years uh, and you're seeing greater greater returns. So I think that's where we've missed the boat a little bit. And if you do it that way, then the owners are also invested in re- ensuring that there are players that they're investing the players and the, the and, and Sri Lanka creates getting what they want out of it so that's where I feel the gap is I know we've talked about the the reasons why um you know it's not quite doing what we're expecting it to do then can you now explain um in, in 5,000 words or more uh why Jaffna keep winning this tournament <laughs> Oh my God, that's actually tough. But um, see, we can just uh, blindly say, yeah, they are the only like consistent franchise, the same owner for you know, consistently four years. Uh, same, I mean, same management. Uh, the coach changed just this year. Uh, the captain changed. Uh, Fisher Pera was the captain until last year. Uh, but the pool of players have changed, right? Uh, apart from uh, Vijay Khan, Piers Khan. Uh, the other players have kept changing. I think Abishka Fernando just went to Dumble only last year and he's back and they won the trophy again. Probably he's the main reason why they keep winning the trophy. But anyway, um, why Jaffna Kings keep winning? I think we just can't give, I mean, in my, in my personal opinion, uh, we just can't put it, uh, like, say it's, be, it's because it's the same management, because it's clearly not the reason. It's clearly not the reason. Uh, 
probably it's how it is. It's some luck, or it's how the tournament has gone so far, or maybe they've always found ways to uh, like win the crunch moments, win knockouts. Mm -hmm. And I th I heard Crad saying that uh, it, they've had they've uh, like continued with the same analyst for all four or five years. So probably he he might have played a, a pivotal part in their title wins. I'm not sure. We don't know, but. Uh, I honestly can't like say this is like is this is the reason why um, they won, but uh, they're finding ways to win, right? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll... I hope is like they they continue like uh, the management continue to own Jaffna, and uh, and and there is one thing that I'm actually disappointed about them. They've won four titles, right? Uh, four titles in five seasons is no mean feat. Just take the trophy to Jaffna, man. Just show it to your home fans. Yeah. Uh, like, create some uh, fan interaction. Uh, and mm -hmm. something I really appreciate about Gaul this season was like, even before the tournament started, they had some fan interaction yeah. event down in Gaul. I'm not sure if there was a huge turn turnout, but still, still, um, that was a good initiative. Jaffna with four titles, just go there, yeah. take Charitra Salanka, just take him on a. Uh, open bus ride around ja the Jaffna town. Just, uh, there are enough, enough, and more cricketers. There are some really, really uh, good schools playing cricket. Uh, they still don't have a stadium with a turf wicket, but still they are playing cricket. There are a lot of uh, budding cricketers. Just inspire them. Just yeah. Have some fan interaction. The, the, we never talk about Sri Lankan politics in this podcast, and that's deliberate. But I know I did see that there is a British Sri Lankan politician who's quite keen to put a stadium in Jaffna which oh. I, don't, I, I have no idea if he could win any election I don't know where the election is but that would be interesting if it if it did happen but I mean I'm not going to hold my breath for that right um uh Dom do, do you want to have a chat about um some of the other sides because I feel we talked about Jaffna quite a bit mm. we've ended up talking about Gaul quite a bit do you want to mention I let's start at Candy right because they were they were Kind of the, the reigning champions. There wasn't a huge amount of change in um, kind of with the core of their squad. Obviously, the ownership kind of fell apart in the last few mm. weeks going into it. Though I do know that SLC did suspect that might happen quite early on, and and they they were they were forewarned that the previous owner might have run out of money. Um, but you know th what, what happened to them because they did not cover themselves in glory, and there were a lot of players. Who desperately need to rebuild themselves after the World Cup? Yeah, it's you know they have an incredibly talented side. You know, um, Chandamal had a good year, right, um, for them, and Shanika had a good year uh, for them. I think uh, Ramesh Mendes also proved his value both as a bowler and as a batter. Uh, I was really my. my the, the player who stood out for me the most, though, was Kaminu Mendes. I thought he really took that number four role that he was given and made it his own. He, um, you know, we all know how well he can play pace, but he was playing spin beautifully um, this tournament as well. So I was really impressed by that. I think they were let down by their bowling. I, you know, they they trusted Angelo and Dawson to contribute five to six overs. And, um, you know, on, on wickets like this, you're going to pay for it. You might be able to get away with it on slower, um, lower wickets, but you're going to get crunched. And, and, and Dawson didn't bowl poorly. I, I'll just say that. But it's not a it's not a replacement for a high caliber bowler or someone like a Matisha Padurana. Um, so to me, it was they did not invest enough in their seam bowling stocks. Even They even benched Chamira which was, again, a, a kind of a strange decision. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to what extent politics are playing into it, right? Because someone like um, Pavan Ratanayaka, who's a top order batter, was batting at 9 or 10 for them, right, to fit that under 23 rule. Uh, is there another way they could have gone about that, tried to make it work? Um, so I think they were lacking in the pace department. Hasaranga had a sort of middling tournament, I think, He's kind of got to reinvent himself with the ball. Uh, not not that he's performing badly, but um, he's been figured out to an extent, right? People are starting to play him like an off spinner. Um, he bowls a little slower than perhaps other bowlers bowl in international cricket, and that can be 
valuable at times, especially when batters are new getting in and aren't having quite adjusted to him. But when he faces set batters, I think he he can go for big runs. So I think that's an issue. So their their talisman was kind of not in his best form. I think that's something that um, they're going to look for next year, right? Comparing last year to this year, led the tournament in wickets, led the tournament in runs, highest strike rate. Um, he was a phenomenon last year. And this year, he wasn't quite able to carry them as much. So I think that all-rounder heavy focus kind of struggled a bit in this particular tournament where there were lots of more runs to be scored. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it's it's interesting the players from that squad that have ended up getting selected for um, the the national side, right? Um, because Chandimal's coming in and, and, and Shamiru's mm. re- retained his place. Um, where I, I definitely thought after the World Cup, I, I thought probably seen the end of, of Chimera for the moment. Um, and, you know, he, he, he didn't quite light it up in, in the in the LPL. So we, we'll talk about that in, in a little bit more. Prad, I want to talk to you about the Dambler team because obviously that's the franchise that you, you know the best. N- new owners this time around. Um, as I think almost every time around. Um, what, what did you make of the way they set up in the end and, and how it all kind of panned out for them? Um, yes, you know, it, you mentioned the, the franchise, I know the best, it was a completely different franchise this year to last year. <laughs> completely different, chalk and cheese. Um, so, but in, in, in all honesty, I was, I was actually really impressed once the new owner had come on board and I think um, Rangana Herat mm. took over as, as coach. Um, the way they had then restructured the team with a few changes that even Adil was mentioning before, they, they did really well. It was very mm-hmm. clever. Um, and I was actually kind of looking at their squad before um, they made the changes. And then I was looking at the players that weren't bought in the auction. I was kind of trying to work out who they would go for because I, I had a feeling they will restructure. Um, and I wasn't surprised with the picks they made. I, th- I thought they made some really good picks. Um, overall, how did Dumbler's season go? I, I think they did... To me, For me, they were the most impressive team and I'll tell you why I know they finished last but I, I, when when the squads were initially picked or in the auction mm. board um, I think they were dead set wooden spooners on everyone's you know mm. tips you know they, they were just like you look at the players they retained that re- out of the squad that we had last year and I thought we built a pretty good squad we had Abishka Fernando we had Kusal Mendes we had uh, Kusal Pereira we had um uh, uh, you know, names I, I could just keep rattling off, right? And they retained, I think, Dushan Heyman, the Provincial Um uh, Then they went and bought the others, right? So yeah. so it, it was a bit surprising to me when I saw the names that were retained. I was like, hang on, what? Sorry, it didn't quite make sense. Yeah. Um, so considering that, and then the way they played in the tournament, I thought it was really smart, very clever. They They played to their strengths. They played as a team, and then um, they really identified a really good under-23 player in, in Chamin Dewey Kamrasinghe, who's, who's been a real find for the tournament. Um, and, and it was very clear they gave him a role. You know, they said, listen, this is your role, this is what we want you to do. And he just excelled in that role. It was simple, um, real simple. Um, so that was, I was quite happy with what I saw from Dumbler. Uh, and I think if, they, if the same owner can return next year, and he has a full season and a full off season to get this squad together, build a management team or staff there, um, and properly structure this. And if the LPL is going to go follow the same road where we're rebuilding squads every year, mm-hmm. I reckon look out for Dumble. I think they'll put in, they'll put together a proper team. The the other interesting thing about it was that the owner was out giving interviews, talking to people. He's been, uh, you know, by the sounds of it, it feels like he might be there for the long term. It doesn't yep. feel like he's looking for this to, to make money for him in the next kind of two or three seasons as well, right? Um, but, you know, you talked earlier, Proud, about the reasons why the ownership keeps changing and, and you know, maybe what food for for SLC at this point about how they, they stop this because it feels like it, it's eventually going to kill the league because they're going to run out of people in the world who who will take it on and will work with them. Adil, we talked about Jamindu there. What what can you tell us about um, about this youngster that's kind of got himself? He's the only one who's kind of I feel bludgeoned his way into international selection. Oh yeah, tell me the Vikram Singh. Boy, I'm really happy for him. Uh, how can I put this into words? Okay, so here's a boy uh, who. Play, uh, 
like started play for sri lanka in 19 back in 2018 19 after a great schools cricket season for st anthony's college candy including a like uh, hi, uh, like a, how how can i say a swashbuckling 100 in the big match because mm. that was his first big match some 17 16 year old from uh, kurunagala who just came to st anthony's recently and no one like quite knew about him and then there's there's a hundred and it was quick it was quite quick as well for big match standards and okay like uh the the fraternity of people who who were following sri lanka schools cricket got to know okay there is this kid called chamil vikram singer and you know what was his speciality he opened the batting and he also opened the bowling so that's 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 like a special package and then he uh, got his chance with sri lanka under 19 Uh, I think he toured West Indies, but unfortunately couldn't make it to the World Cup squad uh, 2020. And then after a, a layoff, he just uh, he came back uh, because there was COVID, so there was not much cricket. Mm-hmm. And then he got back to the Sri Lanka 19 squad and uh, took the trip to West Indies for the World Cup. He played a few games. Uh, he has one or two uh, under 19 hundreds as well. So that was it. And then uh, Chamil Vikram Singh was not heard of for some for, for a long time. 2022 and now we are to 2024. Uh, nearly two years, but he played one season for Dumbul, I think. Uh, and I recently got to know that he spent uh, around three months with the MRF uh, Academy. So they've, he has done some work, and uh, there were some interviews of him in different different channels. So I was like, "Chami, do I see you on YouTube? Where are you? I, aren't you playing? I'm not seeing you on domestic score scorecards." <laughs> but uh, here he got his chance. So we, when after the auction, uh, I just. compiled a list of names of uh, deserving domestic cricketers who who missed out on uh, missed out in the auction and even my uh, chamidu didn't make my list because he had not played domestic cricket for some time so it was not in my i mean he was not uh, ma- uh, making the rounds but kudos to uh, dambulla sixers for like identifying him and picking him uh, i think there is this uh, kurunagala connection as well which i assume him because uh, the owner is from kurunagala rangana herat Uh, they practiced in the Velagedara. Chamundu is from Kurunagala, so that's that's what we expect from uh, you know uh, franchise leagues, right? So the Mumbai Indians support Mumbai boys, so why not Dumbul uh, support uh, the boys from the northwestern uh, region of Sri Lanka? And yeah, so that's how we got in. And okay, uh, Dumb, uh, the just uh, reimagine the situation that he came into bat. Dumbul over four down for around twenty thirty runs. facing uh, candy falcons who had sri lanka's best t20 bowler uh, they had uh, hasnain <coughs> who was really like rockets chamda i'm not sure uh, i'm pretty sure he has not faced a quick bowler as who's as who has, has been as quick as hasnain in his career up to that point and he was playing under lights um, which our domestic players are not exposed to that much we don't even play a domestic final under lights mm. so imagine the difference it's high pressure quality side and probably the first time he is playing on a wicket as good as that in yep. uh, was in candy right yeah so you know how the state of domestic wickets uh, you rarely you hardly see a t20 100 or, or at least a t20 score in excess of 80 70 in domestic t20s so that's the quality of cricket we play in uh, domestic games so he's put into the deep end something has not done before and you know what he did right uh, he just took on Vanindu Asaranga, he took on uh, Hasnain, uh, he took on some other fast bowlers as well. So that that was a that was a great. I mean, that was a good innings if you like look at in T20 standards. But if you uh, look look at Chamindu Vikram Singh from where he is coming, uh, the past experiences that he has had, situations he has played before this, it, that innings is of great great quality because uh, he is not used to these conditions. so that just uh, uh like definitely that put him a few notches ahead in the picking order for sri lanka selection mm. and he didn't stop there he repeated it so that's 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 what makes me feel really really happy for him and the call up is 100% deserving and uh, he might fail if he gets a game he might fail miserably which is which is common i mean it is quite normal because he is going to play he is going to face the world champions uh they are the best team in the world without any argument so he he could fail and even if he had failed in that game against candy falcons in candy uh i wouldn't have minded because uh, he should have been uh, back but fortunately he did I, i'm not sure if the dambulla uh, management would have 
given him all the games of the season if he had failed in that uh, game. But uh, kudos to him, he did what is required out of uh, of him, and that's that's something. Uh, so I just spoke about uh, Chamudu. I know the question was about Chamudu, but I'll also just uh, speak something about Noni Bufanando, because this is the uh, this is what it is required from young players. I might be I'm, I might be being harsh here for the youngsters who I back wholeheartedly, but this is what is required from them. Like the chances they get are very limited. Uh, the whenever they get an opportunity in LPL, uh, forget Chamidu's knock. Most of the time they look mediocre. Just uh, look at the inning Pawan mm-hmm. Ratnayaka uh, played when he got to bat at number four in the only game that he. Like batted in his usual position, that was after two games. Uh, that was after two games where he batted at number nine. So imagine the pressure he's going uh, mm-hmm. going through. And as I said, they're not used to playing under lights. They're not used to uh, mm-hmm. facing these quality international level bowlers. And he, he he's not backed by his franchise. For sure, like even as outsiders, we can say that he, he he's not getting the sufficient backing. And he's sent to uh, stop a collapse. And you know. Score runs in a T20, mm. and he looked absolutely mediocre, which is quite sure. I mean, which is quite fair. And if you judge those cricketers based on the performance in such situations, you're being really, really harsh on him. And at the same time, people like Chamundu Vikramasinghe, who like deliver uh, absolute gems, when you when they deliver, people will say, if Chamundu can do, why can't Pawan do that? <laughs> right? Right, right. These are right. these are comments which I see on Twitter. Uh, they say so. The, the, there is this debate about the six team going on these days, right? So people, I mean, uh, most of the people say you should be able to deliver uh, when you are given the opportunity, which Chamindo did, and he deserves a national call up. Uh, so why can't the others deliver when they are given the opportunities? No, we still are not ready to go into the six team. Of course, uh, these players won't perform in their first uh, opportunity. They are not used to this uh, level. Uh, this is way, way higher pressure than what they face in domestic cricket or they've ever faced in their careers. Even in Sri Lanka under-19 levels, I'm pretty yeah. sure they've not faced this level of pressure. Uh, conditions are different. So we we have to go to the 16. Even if we go to 16, uh, like p- players might flop. So that's why I'm coming back to Nonit Fernando. Nonit Fernando's case is a bit different. He has played a bit of uh, cricket for uh, international cricket. So I honestly expected him, uh, especially given the squad Dambulla had after the auction, he was like a sure starter in that level. So I didn't see any other sure starting names in that squad because, uh, like Prad said, like that was a horrific uh, auction from Dambulla uh, Thunders, not Sixers. But uh, I, I expected Nuvanidu to like grab the opportunity and score score heavily. Uh, but unfortunately, when you're when you're given the opportunity, like it's again, it's harsh. If Chamudu can do, it's, again, I'm asking the same question: If Chamudu can can do, why can't Noni do? I'm being harsh because he is playing in such conditions after a long time. He's not used to that. But that's what is expected, he, he, even if you like it or not. So yes, there is this uh, part that is that should be done by the organizers and management to make sure they get enough opportunities. But it is also the responsibility of the players to grab the opportunities when they uh, get the opportunities. So it's a bit of a balance. Mm-hmm. So we as like fans, we can always stand with the uh, youngsters and mm-hmm. back them. But it's not how uh, the majority looks at it. Like, if you're not good, you're not good, son. So that's what we've yeah. been heard, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, that's, that's just about Chamidu and the young players. The fate of them so- in LPL. You've got incredible knowledge about Jamindu over there. I love that, you know, he's followed the, a trope that you only see in three places in, in religious texts, <laughs> in, super, in superhero films and in Sri Lankan cricket, which is time in the wilderness where nobody knows if you like what you're doing or where you're at, like what what, what you're up to. But he seems to, you know, he's, he's gone through the whole cycle and now hopefully he's ready to, to kind of stand and deliver. We've been talking for ages. Uh, I think basically since, since Murillian existed about how we need a, a seeming all-rounder. I'm not sure his bowling is quite up to international status, but, yeah. you know, how, how, it, it, I think international cricket's another level, right? My yeah. final question about the LPL was going to be, I talked about this quite early on, is the stand, how far away is the standard and the intensity around this league to international cricket? 
is the gap? How big is it? We saw Kussel, saw Pata, we saw Vishka, saw KJP, all score huge amounts of runs in this tournament at various times. We saw, you know, all, all your old Shrunken favourites all in the runs at some point. How, you know, Bardica made a, made a return to the big stage in the final, right? How much can we read into this as fans of Shrunka first and foremost into, you know, what does this mean for when you get to the top? Uh, to, when, they, when they're playing India next week, does, you know, does Kusil Mendes' runs mean anything uh, when, it, when he's, he won't face Bumrah, but he'll be facing the pretty fearsome attack, Dom? What do you think? Yeah, um, it's a great question. I think one of the, the questions we have to ask always when we look at a domestic tournament is how much is that going to correlate, right? And this is the thing with Chimindu with Kramasinghe is that we see he has the skill set to succeed. These are not just runs scored um, by luck, right? But he has the shots, right? He was playing these beautiful slog sweeps off the spinners, right? He, um, to over mid wicket, we we saw him play shots to fast bowlers, and I think. That's what we have to look for is what is the content that we're seeing in the runs produced, right? So to, to take the example of Kusal, what I thought was impressive was not that he scored 100, right? Uh, you know, when he's on, he can score 100 against anybody in the world, right? Uh, but the quality of his batting against spin, I thought was absolutely exceptional. The sweeps were out. He put on a full rate. He showed his full range. Right. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for cricketers who, when you take away option A, have option B. When you take away option A and B, they have option C. Right. So I think when we watch and we look at these tournaments, we have to say, how often were these players forced to go to? Were they able to show us that they have options A, B and C? Right. Because if you're if you're, you know, kicking around a, a bad spinner. Right. We can't really tell what that means at the international level. But if we see how you manipulate a good spinner, right, that tells us information. So weeding out the, okay, there's all these guys who scored 300 runs. What have they shown that's different from what they did before? So someone like Patham Nisanka has shown way more intent, more power down the ground, more range against spinners, right? So those are things that you can cite and say, this helps to well, tell me that they are ready for international cricket. Now, I think with the young boys, someone like Chamindu, you have to say, does he have the skill set that if we give him time, he can develop? And this is something um, I think Sri Lanka needs to pay attention to is who are those guys who have those rare skill sets that need to be backed at all costs? And we'll talk about this when we get to the squad. But I think that's something that we need to differentiate between performance and what that perform and the quality of the performance in terms of the skill set that those players are showing. So for me, Kusal's knock showed that he's back in form. He showed his full range um, against a decent quality bowling attack. And um, for Chamindu, it's the pressure that he's been under, right? The, the pressure that he's never been under before being able to produce those shots and those skills that you would value in a national side. Uh Prad, you've been in and around the national setup. How much, um, you know, when, when I don't know if, how privy you were to kind of selection decisions or selection conversations, but how much is domestic cricket taken into account when they're when they're looking at and picking sides? Clearly, for the squad they've picked for um, for the India series next week, it's pretty much the most important thing. It's almost like anything you've done before this series doesn't before this tournament doesn't count. Yeah, no, exactly right. And look, I mean, I've never been in, in a selection meeting as such or been required to be in a selection meeting or have much say, but I have, during my time there, been referred. I mean, I work with a previous set of selectors who would, you know, not all the time, but once in a while, if they're contemplating a particular player or a particular position in the squad, uh, you know, they, they'll give me a call, they'll put me in the meeting and say, right, we're looking at, you know, these two or three players, give us the stats, tell us what you think. Um, so being involved in that and, and, and in, in that sense, you know, answering your first question, how much do they refer to domestic form? Um, look, it, it depends on the time uh, of when they're selecting the squad, really. Um, you know, for this particular India series, I, I, th I think it's best 
look, you, you can rely on LPL form. Um, and this is only my opinion, but I'm not entirely a fan on picking solely on international mm-hmm. form. And, 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 and the reason I point to this is is because a um, great example, I'm Shri Fernando, right? An absolute LPL monster would just dominate year after year mm-hmm. after year, right? But we haven't seen it quite translate in the international circuit. It's not that he hasn't been given opportunities. Last year, same thing happened. Mm-hmm. Was picked straight into the side straight after LPL. Failed after three or four games or something like that and then was dropped again. Um, and it's happened before as well. Um, so it, it's a matter of, I think it, it's it, it should be a guide, I think. And, and we should look at it, especially for when you're trying to unearth those young, you know, unknown players. We've got gaps in our squad. We need to fill fast volley all around it. We don't have someone and this guy called Chapman the week he turns up. Mate, 100%. Give him a shot, right? He's proven whatever chances he's got. Um, but for the more established players... I think it's getting that fine balance of, okay, yeah, we need some form leading into a series, so how are they been scoring the LPL? But at the same time, how is their previous international form been as well, you know? Well, how are they hitting the ball? How has that been coming through as well? So I think you've got to get that fine balance. Um, and, and I think you're right. Now now is the most important time because it's straight after the LPL, going into an India series off a horrible World Cup. So it's a, it's a tricky situation. Um, I, I do. I'll give you the last question, though we're all going to have to have a say on this one because it, it's, I think, the big one of the of the day. Um, what would you t- say to Dilshan Madishanka right now when he's trying to figure out why he's not in this squad? What would be your your words to him, and how would you, if you were a selector of the phone, going, oh, "I'm sorry, you, you you're not coming with us"? How would you explain that? Decision. Oh God, <laughs> I don't want to be this guy. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know if they actually had a conversation. But I'm pretty sure they might have had a conversation. But I just can't understand uh, the uh, thinking behind it. Uh, the only thing, the only reason I think is that he has some niggle or injury concern and they just want him to uh, rest him for this T20 series and preserve him for probably the ODI series or maybe if they are planning to take him to England for the uh, three tests in uh, England maybe if they want to rest because that's the only like rational reason uh, I would uh, what do you call be satisfied with uh, if they've uh, decided to uh, in, drop him but you, you can't just drop him like uh, even uh, we were just talking before the recording started with Dom and Dom was pointing out at the stats uh, even though his overall stats looks not that good uh, this LPL he has done quite well uh, with the new ball in the power play uh, I think Dom, Dom will take us through the stats yeah. uh, when he's given the opportunity so Dilsha Madhushanka had a decent LPL so since you asked the question, like, what would I tell? I actually missed the chance of uh, wishing him luck before the under-19 World Cup. Okay, let me just tell a personal story. So, uh, I my university was in Mathura, down under, uh, which uh, the area where Dilisha Madhushanka is from, quite close. So, I was on my way back home from university on a Friday evening. And I incidentally met him at the bus stand. And he was coming out of the public toilet. And I was like... No one else knows him, right? No one else knows him. He had nothing, he had nothing not even... Uh, just you and Shimin Devas, yeah. the only two people at that point. Yeah. You no, him. no, no. Yeah. Like, the cricketing community, of course, knew him because he had played for Sri Lanka yeah. 19. But in that bus stand, no one else knew that this is Dilshan Madhushanka. He's playing for Sri Lanka 19 and he will be a star for Sri Lanka in the future. I don't know. I met him. I was like, Dilshan Madhushanka. I was like, good luck for the World Cup. I mean, of course, I t- uh, said it in Singhala. Undrakarana World Cup figure. And then I just met him. So even now, if I may meet him, I'll tell you, look, brother, you've come a long way since then. I don't know if he remembers me or not, but I'll just tell you, I'm the guy who uh, met you in the bus stand, uh, bus stand around five years ago, probably 2020, early 2020 or late 2019. So I'm that same guy. So I'll tell you the same thing again. Good luck, bro. Your time will come. Uh, since I mean, since 2019, you've come a long way and uh, it's only onwards and upwards for you. So just uh, forget this uh, you'll be definitely back in the squad and you'll be uh, castling batsman again absolutely yeah. um i and on that note if if he is going to be in the test series yeah he needs to be in england as soon as possible 
because I don't I don't believe he's played any cricket in England. Yeah. The pitchers are going to do something totally different when he starts throwing the ball into it. They need if that is the plan, they need to. Get, like he could come and stay in my spare room. Look, it's all ready for him. <laughs> if he needs to, there's a cricket pitch right out the front. Like, I'll, I'll go and keep looking for him. Whatever, whatever they need to do. If he need, like he needs to. It's not, for the for the record, I don't live have a cricket pitch in my front garden. I live opposite a cricket pitch. Um, Dom, do you want to give us some stats about why why he yeah, should yeah. be in this side? Because I have seen a few detractors on on social media today, basically saying he didn't do much in the LPL. He sh- he shouldn't be there, but. You know, we've heard Prad say it, you can't just pick an LPL form. You have to pick beyond that. We haven't. We're not even going to have time to get into the whole. Should Angelo be dropped? Should Chandimar coming yeah. in? We're going to do that for our next. Uh, the next show that you get from us will be a preview show for the series. We'll go into all of that in much more detail um, because there there is a lot to unpick with this squad, um, and that will be one of the classic Morelia therapy sessions where we sit down, <laughs> we talk about the decisions the uncles have made, and we just tell you why we think they've made them, and then you can go away and decide whether or not they're the right decisions or not. We don't want to tell... We don't want to... We never judge. SLC, we never judge. You make the decisions, and we kind of just have a conversation around it. That's what we try and do. Um, if if you... Uh, while Dom's getting those stats up, yeah. if, you, if you're still here... Please do hit the subscribe button, leave some comments, tell all your friends about us. Uh, we we try and discuss as much Lunkin Cricket as we can possibly do around all of the other jobs and stuff that we've got going on um, with us. Um, and we've got loads of content coming up about the Asia Cup. Uh, Estelle's and Dambler as we speak, uh, watching it. I think she's one of the only very few journalists who are there. I think all the others might be working for the broadcaster. And uh, we've also got the, the, the India series coming up and then course the England test series that we'll uh, we'll be covering in much detail as well Dom take yeah. it away so in the power play Vilshan Madashanka bowled 11 overs at an economy of 6.73 his dot ball percentage was 52 he only gave up two fours um he gave up six sixes he only took two wickets so that's you know that's what people are pointing to but he was containing in the power play and what I saw, and this is more important than the stats, is he was bowling in excess of 140Ks, um, getting swing, right? And as Prad said, those are things, you know, Benora cannot do that. Benora had a great yeah. LBO. Don't, don't want to take anything away from him. But can he swing the ball at 140Ks? Does he have, you know, a record, you know, not even eight months old? Where he took twenty wickets in a T in a in a ODI World Cup, most of those at the top of the order. Um, you can't give up on a twenty three year old kid with that kind of talent, right? Um, it's it's something that you have to nurture, you have to provide pathways for, and and you know you have to look beyond the okay he only took two wickets. But he was bowling really really well. He was getting good shape. He was getting good pace. Uh, that's exactly what you want from your fast bowler. And, you know, when I think about this squad, one of the areas that perhaps they were missing in is power play bowling, right? Nuan Tushara came in and did a great job. But could you imagine pairing him with Dilshan Madhushanka? That would be a handful. And then when you consider the fact we're playing India, right? India is well known for having trouble with left arm fast bowlers, right? That's like a, a trope. Every team stacks their their lineup with left arm fast bowlers. And we drop our premier left arm fast bowler who mind you last time he faced India, which was the ODI world cup. He took a five for including, you know, one of the balls of the world cup to take Rohit Sharma second ball. And there is no justification for this. Right. Um, and if we're talking about form, Jushmanta Chamira, I love him. He's, he, he's a great, great. He's been a great servant of Sri Lankan cricket, immensely talented, but he was benched by candy. How can you justify dropping a 23-year-old gun player who has produced for you in the past, who has so much potential, and especially if we're thinking about the 26th World Cup, right? We're going to have that at home. That's 18 months away. We've got a plan for it. I I don't understand, uh, you know, having four or five 30-plus-year-old guys, not not just 30-plus, 32, 33-year-old-plus guys in the squad, who play the same, who bat in the same position, right? 
And, th and, and that's the thing that is mystifying to me is when you have the chance to back young generational talent, right? This guy has the talent to be an all timer for Sri Lanka in, in the white ball format. You have to do it. Dropping and, and, and uh, picking these guys at random hurts their confidence. And we know how much some of these young boys, right? Someone like Dilshan Madashanka from a small village in Hungama, right? How is he responding to that? Does he have the supports to respond to that, right? Some people, yeah, it might work for it, but um, it, it's shocking. It's something where um, you, you, you wonder how the selection is being made, right? Uh, what are the, what's the criteria they're using to choose these players, right? Um, and especially when you've just flopped out of a World Cup to go back to, sorry, I'm going on to on things that we'll discuss at some other point, but um, it's a bad decision. Yeah, save that for therapy. Um, <laughs> Prad, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the last word on the LPL. Um, anything that you think we needs to be said that hasn't been said yet, say it now, the floor is yours. <laughs> no, look, I, I mean, um, I, I just because it's, it's the point of the topic at the moment, I, I, I'm just going to be the devil's advocate for this Dilshan Mother Shanka selection, right? Just going to, I don't know if this is where they're thinking. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, a member of either camp. Uh, I think Dilshan Mother Shanka needs to be in the squad. However, the only justifiable reason I can see why they've done it, right? So besides the fact that he's niggling an injury or not, whatnot is they've identified a very specific reason for having left um, off pace, uh, you know, someone like a Binero who can just hit line and length, you know? Um, so th unless they've identified a specific role like that and they said, listen, we need someone who can just do this. Uh, and then they've identified different, different roles within the squad. And as such, Gilshan Mathesank has just missed out. That is the only other way I can mm -hmm. think that makes sense in all this. Um, but look, I've, I've always said it, I've said it since day one, you know, firstly, we need to play, I know we're going to the India series here again, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we're going to need to play, a, a, you know, six batters, five bowlers combination. Mm. We have to do it. Whatever said that, we have to do it. And if we're going to do that, we're going to need variation within that. And that variation, we need a left armor. We, I, I mean, I really hope we don't stick with Two paces, they're both slingers, and one in the Mahesh. We that is a that is not going to work for us, right? It, it just it does. There's no variation there. Um, there's mystery, but there's no variation, mm. right? Mm. Um, we we need a different angle. I mean, just remember, you, um, Dom was talking about the ball to Roy Sharma. I take it back uh, another year. Look at the ball he gave Virat Kohli mm -hmm. in the Asia Cup. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it's the Indians don't like him, man. <laughs> they don't like him. <laughs> So they, I'm sure they're quite happy he's not playing. Um, yeah, maybe that's what it was, just to appease Jay Shaw, just to get another series next year. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, and if that's the case, then that's a level of chess that my mind <laughs> can't really comprehend. So fair play to <laughs> SLC if, if that's what they're doing. That's why I, I have... <laughs> at the LPL final. He said, if you pick Dilshan Madashanka, we're going to pull the <laughs> Yeah. He's like, no to that guy. That guy can't come here anymore. Um <laughs> Anyway, guys, let's leave it there. If you went this not, far, please not do. Anymore, right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's not even he's he's anymore. Yeah, he's fit. He's retired, so. Yeah, still. Cody fears fears still Sean, doesn't he? That's, That's why he retired. Doing. He knew the next. Yeah. Term, the, the next. Uh, he was like, you know what? Can't can't go out like that. There's there's absolutely no chance you go back to back tournaments without playing Sri Lanka and losing his wicket to to, <laughs> uh, to Shankar, right? So he was like, I'm I'm calling it. I'm done. I'm going out in a high, <laughs> like. Um, guys, let's leave it there. Adil, thank you for uh, coming and making your debut. Um, we've been the Morally End. Uh, we'll be back in the next couple of days at some point uh, with, with more cricket chat. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Tell all your friends. Bye. <laughs>